Good morning, Armstrong. So a new Associated Press poll shows that just about half of Americans say they will take the vaccine. The rest, though, are not so sure they're going to take it or they say they won't. So many who are sort of on the fence, they're worried about safety issues with the vaccine. What does the White House need to do right now to sell this vaccine to the public? Well, I, I don't think um, the White House or Congress, Melanie, can sell a vaccine. I think the results of the vaccine can only sell itself and earn the trust of people around the world. I think it's encouraging that the, the, the vaccine is already being uh, tested in the United Kingdom. Uh, and we can just wait to see the impact that it has on the patients that are being tested as we speak. And then you have, what people have to realize also, there is time because you have group one, where it's the first line respondents and the elderly who are nursing homes, the physicians and the nurses. And then you have the group 1A, which is the elderly and the next tier of people who are also on the front lines. And then two months from now, it's going to be the high risk with asthma. And if we are already being told that people with those with asthma and other underlying allergies probably should not take this vaccine. And the last group, which is group three, it's going to be another six months before it goes out to the general population. But that will give you enough time to see across many demographics. Because listen, the laboratory can, let's say, only test 20 to 30,000 people. Now that the, um, the vaccine is in this huge marketplace, you have millions of people that are going to have access to it. Now, you get a very good understanding of what, they, what the, the repercussions, the benefits, and the things that we should be cautious about as it relates to this vaccine. So I think the vaccine itself will um, prove to people that you should try to not. And then there's going to always be the mindset because of the Tuskegee Institute and because of what happened uh, in the Gulf War with anthrax when people tested it. And at that time, you had about uh, 500,000 soldiers that were tested, 20,000 died, 100,000 were disabled. And we still don't know what happened to the 340,000 340, years later, the kind of impact that it had on them. That history is not going to ever erase the families who've been impacted by this by the long term and their loved ones continue to suffer. So it's not the White House or anybody proving the credibility of the vaccine. That must happen with the vaccine itself. And of course, it's going to be a while, as you say, before everybody gets the vaccine and uh, it's safe out there again. And in the meantime, these coronavirus numbers are just spiking. They are out of control. And so local jurisdictions are clamping back down with new restrictions. Talk about this economic toll this is all having, especially on small businesses in our area. You know, um, yesterday, a um, business partner and I had lunch at the Monica restaurant. Literally, we're in the restaurant for almost 45 minutes before anybody ever entered. And my business partner, who also happens to own restaurants in Merlin, just got a notice that all their restaurants are going to close down. And 80% of his employees are minorities, the young kids in college and high school, and they're going to be out of a job. And just you just think about that. And then you go to other places in the establishment, they're experiencing the same. And while you may think you're resolving one crisis, you're creating a much greater crisis. And, and, and the cure um, um, should not be, as they say, whatever the crisis may be, uh, the cure should not be worse than the crisis itself. And so the cure that they're putting in place to handle and sort of manage this COVID-19 to protect people is to destroy businesses and our economy at the same time. How do you balance it out? I think we can use learn from the United Kingdom and other countries that are facing the same crisis, but yet they're not shutting down their economy. It is having an enormous and a huge impact, and people just don't understand that. And then when you think about this moratorium that's being lifted of people not having to pay rent and not having to pay utilities, some of $3,000 behind in rent, $2,000 behind in utilities, when that hit in January, January, Melanie, and you couple this all together, you're talking about an absolute economic collapse. Well, it is definitely going to be a tough winter ahead for sure. Thank you so much for your thoughts today, Armstrong Williams. And you can watch the Armstrong Williams Show. It airs every Saturday morning at 1030 right here on WJLA 24-7 News.